Here's the layout of a roof it's called the graphic method. It's 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 a it's a good method to calculate odd angled hips and valleys. And it's daunting to look at at first, but let's just concentrate on the blue lines. That, those are the plate lines of the of a roof and plan view. And in this case there's five hips and one valley. You can see there's two of them, one, two. And here's the other two here. The short ones that meet the ridge, just ignore these long ones. Short ones that meet the ridge go down from the blue lines, which are the plate lines, up to meet the ridge, and they come across here. And you have a valley, and then over here you have another hip. So five hips, one valley, and then common rafters, which emanate from the plate line and plan view at 90 degrees, which is very important for this model specifically. So here, let's look at this one here. We have a common rafter, or it's a, it's a king common, because it emanates right from where the two hips meet the ridge, and it runs from a 90 degrees uh, in plan view from the plate line. And in this case, this is a 12-12 pitch roof. So this is the run, and the rise would be equal to run, and it would come up here, and the hypotenuse, or the rafter length, would come down here and meet at the plate line and at the ridge here. So there'd be this triangle here. And this would be the ridge height up here for this for this span here. And if you laid that triangle down on its side here, which is what I've done, you can see here would be the run and this would be the rise laid on it laid on its side. And this is the hypotenuse or the rafter length here. And I've done that again over on this span, which is a bit greater than this one's is a uh, is, is narrower than this one. This is really important though, because if you run along this plate line here, you'll notice that this hip bisects the corner. So that means these pitches on either side of the hip are the same. And you come down here, even though this hip here, which is the one that meets at the ridge here, uh, doesn't isn't running at a 45, it bisects this corner because this isn't a 90 degree corner. And so it bisects it and runs up to the ridge then it goes down and it bisects this other corner, which is also not a 90 degree corner. So these, these hips, like I said, don't run at 45, but they still bisect the corner. So that means then the pitch from this narrow span turns this corner at the same, it's the same pitch, comes around the corner, and, and, it's, and it's, it's the same here all the way around the house, essentially, until you get down here. On the other end, well, you'll notice this hip doesn't bisect the corner, so this pitch changes around out here. It's a steeper pitch out here than it is everywhere else. And I was saying just now that this is a narrower span, but with the same pitch as it goes around this corner. This right here is a wider span. This That means this ridge is higher, because the wider the span is, the, the higher the ridge is, assuming the pitch doesn't change. So this ridge is up here, and this one's down here, and they have to meet by way of this broken hip right here. And um, this is an interesting way of laying out because here we have, look at, look at this fan right here. The ridge height is established once again by the common rafter run. This is the, it's the king common runs from the intersection of the hip and the, uh, the two hips essentially in the ridge come down to the plate line, whatever, measure that run and lay it on its side and that's the rise and that's the hypotenuse. Just like I said, it was a triangle up here, lays down on its side, this would be the hypotenuse. Now, common rafters emanate in plan view from the plate line at 90 degrees and it's a wonderful thing because if you took the hypotenuse, which would be here, and you swung it outside the building and laid it down on the concrete or whatever it is on the outside as though a storm blew the roof down and laid it on flat. You would see this would be the length of the roof. This would be the, the length of the rafter. And this would be the ridge where it meets here. This length here is, is just transferred by way of the two common rafters out here. Same length ridge. This is the hypotenuse of the common rafter here. And the niftiest thing of all is that where the ridge meets the hips and this intersection there is the same intersection here 
and where the plate line meets the bottom of the hip, that's this intersection here. So if you connect the dots here, and that's that's the hip length. And um, and you'll notice there's two that are emanated from the same spot. They're both the same hip. And this is half, this is the other half. Yeah. So it's, cut, it's sliced in half, and so it can be laid out. And on this side here, same thing. Common rafter runs from, this king common rafter runs from the, from the, where the ridge meets the hip, comes on down. Sorry, right here. Ridge meets the hip, comes on down past the plate for the length of the hypotenuse, meets the other end of the ridge here where the ridge meets the hip and comes down to where the, the hip meets the plate line and that's that's the length of the hip so essentially this is like if i cut this out with a pair of scissors and folded it right here at the plate line and swung it over that would be the roof plane and that's what's happening all around this building here's a good example here we know the common rafter here runs outside the building. It's the intersection of the ridge to the hip and the hip to the plate meets the intersection of the ridge to the hip and the hip to the plate. Connect the dots, that's the hip length. Swing this hip around where the two meet. That's this roof plane if you were to if you were to cut this out with the scissors and swing it up here, that'd be this roof plane here. And that's what all this is on the outside here. And valleys are a little bit more complicated because they overlap each other. So this one I tried to show the, this piece here is or, as though it were a piece of paper sitting on top of another piece of paper. I use hidden lines when I ran it through. I think I forgot to draw one of them out as a hidden line, but nevertheless, you get the idea. This piece would fold here and swing up, the piece underneath it would fold there and swing up, and they would meet each other, where, where this hip length and this hip length are the same because they're the same hip. They would sew together and create this intersection right here. You can see that happens all the way around. Now in this case, I ran out of room outside the building, so I had to swing, swing it in, and that's why you have a these two hips here and I swung it in. Here's the common rafter from the intersection of the two hips and the ridge has to emanate from the plate line at 90. That's the law of the land. I just ran it on whatever the hypotenuse was we established over here. That is to say, take that back, different run, and use this, this hip, which we know is the same hip from when I swung an arc where that arc met the common rafter at a 90, we connect the dots and that's the, that's the hip of this corner here. So yeah, that's one good way to get an understanding of what's happening. It's not the best way to lay it out, but it sure is a good way to get an understanding of it.